Coach Yaney, and today in Homemade Science, I want to try an experiment that I haven't tried before, so we're going to see this together. I'm basing this experiment on an event that happened in my neighborhood several years ago. We had a tornado that was an F3 to F4 come across our property. It traveled for about seven miles going through neighborhoods and farms, doing tremendous amounts of damage. Now, one of the farmers talked about the damage that was done to his buildings and his crops, and what I found amazing is that he talked about some of the produce that he could find had several pieces of straw embedded into the produce. Made it look like a pincushion. Apparently he had piles of straw nearby and the high winds were actually able to drive it into the fields of the fruits or vegetables. Straw is a collection of the stems of grain products such as wheat, oats, barley, or other grains and grasses. If you've ever felt it, it can be quite sharp. But is it strong enough to pierce the skin of this pumpkin? Now how fast does this straw have to be moving? Well, I don't know, but a net 4 tornado can have air speeds up to about 260 miles an hour. To test the story, I went through quite a bit of straw and found some pieces that I think might work. Now I'm going to start by seeing if I can generate enough speed just by blowing through this pipe. pumpkin didn't work, so let's try something really easy. See if we can get it through a sheet of newspaper. Well, the paper works, so now let's try something a little bit tougher. We'll replace that pumpkin with a tomato. See if we can get it to stick here. Well, so far we're already able to slightly pierce tomatoes. How fast are the straws going? We can get a rough idea if we measure it against this speed strip. I've added red tape to this end for better visibility, and we're simply going to record it moving across this grid at high speed. 42 centimeters in 10 frames works out to about 20 meters per second, or 45 miles an hour. Well, 45 miles an hour just isn't fast enough. So instead of blowing through this tube, I'm going to switch over to this air compressor and see if we can get it moving faster with this. This is the controller that attaches to the supply line. That's a good bit of air when I squeeze the handle. Now I'm simply going to attach this pipe using a little duct tape to hold it in place. Now before I continue, let me say that the following are not demonstrations that I do with students, and I certainly hope that you don't try this at home. Now for my added safety, I think from this point on I'm going to have a piece of plexiglass between myself and the targets. To start, I'll add a piece of straw and then push it down with this thin dowel here. That should be about right. I'll position the tube far enough away from the target so that the straw clears the tube before it makes contact. The pumpkin's too hard, so let's try a tomato. Well, the air compressor certainly worked a lot better. These straw, pieces of straw went in about two inches into the tomato. Now, let's start with an apple. The apple's much tougher than the tomato is. I'm surprised how well that worked. Now, here's something that's even harder. Let's try this melon. Not quite. Well, that looks like that was a little bit faster. Now, let's go through and measure it. The camera speed is 460 frames per second, and the straw measures to be 42 centimeters in three frames. We work that out. It gives us a speed of about 67.2 meters per second, or 150 miles an hour. Now, my compressor's rated at about 90 PSI, and that was enough to impale the apple or the tomato but it wasn't quite good enough for the pumpkin or the melon. So we're going to set it up once more. For these trials, I wanted to make a frame for the pipe that would hold it a bit more securely. My source of gas in this case is going to be this CO2 fire extinguisher. Now liquid carbon dioxide pressurizes at about 850 PSI. 
That's about 10 times higher than what we had with the air compressor. Now let's see how it does against this tomato. The straw went right through the tomato and stuck into this pumpkin that was behind it. So I guess we know how the pumpkins are going to hold up. This time it went about half of the way through it. The tomatoes aren't holding up very well, so let's move on to the pumpkins. This works very well. It's taking quite a bit of force to pull the straw out. I'm finding at the higher speeds, quite often the straws will shatter instead of penetrating into the skin. Now I know the farmer wasn't growing pineapples, but let's see how a pineapple holds up. Now let's try a sweet potato. This feels to be the hardest of anything tested so far. With this setup, we can even penetrate the hard skin of the sweet potato. So once again, I want to go ahead and set up the speed strip, and we'll measure how fast the straw is going in this case. Due to the much higher speed, I now have to shoot at 960 frames per second. The measured speed works out to about 163 meters per second, or 365 miles an hour. That is faster than the winds of an F5 tornado. Now, going back to the farmer's original story, was it possible? Well, at 150 miles an hour, we did get some pretty good results. With higher speeds, the results were even more impressive. What do you think? Was it possible for the high winds of a tornado to embed straw into various fruits and vegetables? I would say it's plausible, but I think he embellished his story just a bit. Well, I did enjoy making this video and it's probably something I want to try again. So if you have any suggestions for either the targets or the projectiles, please add it to the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and come back and see me again. Bye.